Geez, I love a motivated business owner, one who takes on the world. Remember past guest muesli maker Flip Shelton, who started National Porridge Day? Or what about Chick-fil-A franchise owner Arthur Greeno, who set two Guinness World Records to promote his business? Well, let's add to the crazies today with self-professed safety nerd Sarah Jane Dunford, who has single-handedly established a gala awards event for her industry. The results for her brand and her business, nothing short of amazing. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead, now here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, <laughs> so much more importantly, you're a motivated business owner. You are ready to crank out some great marketing to turn that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. And that's pretty much what we do around here. That's what the show's all about. You tune in and walk away with actionable marketing tips, tricks, knowledge, insights, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, that will build your business. Big show today, self-professed safety nerd, Sarah Jane. I call her SJ. She's ace. Got a great story to tell. Oh, so many marketing learnings. Got an update on my upcoming Philippines outsourcing tour. You coming? I hope so. Small group. We're going to have some fun. Got a listener question from a fish and chip shop owner. <laughs> Love a chippy. Love a potato cake, actually. Always put the vinegar on first, then the salt. Rookie mistake if you don't. And I've got a motivational marketing quote about your mobile phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Hey, uh, today's show, lovingly brought to you by Net Registry, who care about one thing, you and your business. So that's kind of two things. But they get your marketing sorted online. Boy, you need to do that. Check out their exclusive listener packages over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. And what about Audible? They make this show possible too. They've got 180,000 audiobooks ready for immediate download. You can grab a free one of your choice right, well, not right now, after the show's finished. You with me? Stick around for like however long it takes and then go and grab one over at audibletrial.com forward slash S-B-B-M. Tough letters, those to say. Hey, as per usual, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reid. That's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Now, coming up very shortly, motivational marketing chat with safety nerd SJ about how to put on awards nights for your industry, but it's so much more than that. She's got a great why, why she does what she does. So many marketing learnings. Stick around for that. But have you noticed a relaxed essence in my voice? Probably not, because I'm talking up like this. But inside, I'm feeling very chilled. I've been away on a 10-day health retreat. (laughs) Hello. How good was that? Do I recommend it? Oh, yeah. No phone, no Wi-Fi, no coffee, no sugar. Loads of fun, unreal food, plenty of activities. And I don't know, just think I'm a better person for doing it. Got a bit tired by the end of a couple of weeks ago. Needed a break. Said to the missus, I'm out of here. Just for a short time. She's lovely, my wife. She let me go. And now I'm back and I'm sort of glowing. Happy about that. I put a post inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum about my learnings from it, some of the things I did, where I went, all that type of stuff. If you remember, you would be able to read it. Hey, um, 
great feedback on an episode two episodes ago, episode 305 with Kelly Baker Jamison. She owns Edible Blooms, that rockin' and rollin' online business. She shared so much good stuff. I've been sending Edible Blooms all around the place and getting lots of lovely thank yous. I'm practicing gratitude at the moment, and it's a good thing. And Practicing it via edible blooms, you know, they send they send bouquets that you can eat made of chocolates and fruit and stuff. It's good. And Kelly very kindly gave us a discount code. Don't tell anyone this one, but it's the word thank you. No hyphen, all uppercase. Get you a 10% discount. Got to love that. But wonderful feedback. And, hey, upcoming, the Small Business Big Marketing Freedom Through Outsourcing Tour. Woo, Hello. We're off to the Philippines. That's what we're doing. It's the second one. Did one last year. Going to do one this year, June 2016. It's in the Philippines. Four days, that's all. And people have been asking me, who's it for, Timbo? Who's it for? It's a good question. It's for you, the motivated business owner, if you're struggling with doing the cost of business in Australia. It's an expensive place, Australia. Or you might like the idea of offloading repetitive tasks that are taking way too long and costing you way too much locally. Hey, there's a couple of good reasons. Or it's also for you if you feel like just three-day business vacation, four-day business vacation really, to the Philippines with me in a, in a mini bus and a handful of other motivated business owners. That sounds good. That's, that's enough. You don't need any more reasons. That's who it's for. I've put a little video up over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash freedom, and you can, you can find out a bit more, and you can see me rattle on about last year's tour and what you are going to benefit from by going on this year's tour. Your business will change forever. Promise. Oh, yeah. Righto, feeling chilled. You want to do a little meditation before we get stuck into today's guest? Probably wouldn't translate over the airwaves because it would be like silence. It's nice to get silence though. I had little silent moments while I was away on my 10 day retreat. Haven't had any caffeine or sugar since returning. Well, only sugar that like exists in the fruit and stuff. Like my skin's glowing, I've got a shiny forehead. It's good. I haven't had a shiny forehead for a while. Hey, today's guest, Sarah Jane Dunford, SJ, self-professed safety nerd and owner of workplace safety consulting business, Riskology. There's a marketing lesson in itself, team. Those fun names, personal brand names like the safety nerd, happy family lawyer. Hey, we've had her on previously. My marketing consultancy many years ago, not now because I don't do that. It was called the ideas guy. People always remembered it. They'd refer to me as the ideas guy. And I love SJ's business name, Riskology. Anyway, I digress. SJ is a long-time listener of this show, like long time. And she's in sm- at Small Business Big Marketing for a member. So guess what, team? She's having some success with marketing and business because she respects the power of marketing. And she takes action too. What's interesting about this interview is that SJ had an idea to put on an inaugural, is that the word, inaugural, gala safety awards night in her local area for her industry, right? But the magic is she executed on it. Yeah, yeah. Didn't just have the idea. She did it. Took it to market. Made a plan. Implemented. That's where the magic lies. The results for her business and her personal brand, amazing. And after this interview finished, she put an update inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum uh, to say what's transpired since the awards night had been on. Fantastic. So I interviewed her like mm, a week just after the awards had been put on and subsequently the magic continues to happen. Great interview. I started off by asking SJ, what's her superpower? (laughs) <laughs> which turned out to be quite a confusing one. Uh, I think having a Volvo pair of glasses, an invisible pair of glasses and being a safety nerd, I absolutely love safety through and through. You do. So your your yes. superpower is, is, is what's your glasses? 
My, I don't wear glasses, yeah. but my invisible Volvo glasses, yes. Volvo glasses? Volvo driving glasses. <laughs> and, and how, Those thick, dorky ones. How are they your um, – how, how does that make you – give you superpowers? Uh, well, I find health and safety really easy and simple to understand. Mm-hmm. And when I talk to other people about health and safety, sometimes they think it's this big, horrible – lump of paperwork that you've got to deal with and yeah, so right. that enthusiasm and the the ease of it's not that hard and seeing the light bulb turn on yeah, i love you, doing that sj when i when i first met you that passion for what you do is infectious and i think it's a really interesting thing to understand for other business owners which is if, if, if it's obvious that you love what you do, that you genuinely believe that it is, you know, what you're here to, 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 to bring to life, then it's going to make doing business with you so much more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, and I found that um, other safety professionals, they're, they're seen as, as the fun police a little bit, so I try really hard not to be perceived like that did you did you actively kind of look around the competitive landscape and say hey okay everyone's a bit kind of straight and rational here I'm going to be different or were you just different anyway um it's interesting to start with I thought people would take me more seriously and um and respect me more if I was the the librarian type and I have my clipboard and I'd sit down and get straight down to business. Mm-hmm. And then when I started my own business, I I wasn't worried about what my boss thought and I and I started being myself a lot more because I had very much a very vibrant, bubbly personality at home and at work I was very um, straighty 180. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my personality at work then started to change and I found that I was more relaxed and I had more enjoyment in um, the conversations and things that I had with clients. Being yourself, hey? Yeah. Even calling your your safety consultancies called Riskology, you have given your personal yes. brand the name, you, well, you call yourself the safety nerd. I mean, this speaks volumes, mm-hmm. you know, and what a great way to differentiate yourself in what I'm sure is a very mm. crowded marketplace. Yeah, definitely. Uh, even in my um, personal life, people will always bring up safety around me because they know how much I love it. So being able to have that talk about safety with people personally when usually you wouldn't talk about workplace Mm. safety in the personal sense. You've got a very strong why from memory, haven't you, SJ? Why you're you're involved in safety? Yeah, it's it's quite interesting. um, When I was really young, my dad, he had a workplace accident where his foot was nearly decapitated uh, working in a brewery and the first aider was so drunk at the brewery, he just put a Band-Aid on it. So I grew up with Dad having no feeling in his foot. But then in my early 20s, I had a couple of friends that were permanently injured. And at the same time, I was reading a book called Lessons from Longford about the SO gas plant explosion in Melbourne, and I was just absolutely fascinated with it. And at the same time, with with the things that happened with my friends, um, all while I was in my early 20s and they were. One um, was an apprentice builder and he fell off the roof and became a paraplegic and he was a massive surfer and um, I was friends with his girlfriend as well. They broke up. He he really had to find a new um, path in life becoming a paraplegic. Another friend, he was on the last private ferry service in Sydney. He was working there and the rope was around his leg. The ferry went and he was decapitated from below the knee. And another friend uh, wasn't told. Yeah, and and we used to go out night clubbing in Sydney and he had his prosthetic leg and it used to squeak and he'd say, you know, what girls would like me? It squeaks when I dance. And so seeing the impact of young 20-year-old friends with permanent injuries. And then the last one was a manual handling injury where um, he got an early onset of a degenerative back condition and he was never told how to lift. Do you share these stories in your sort of day-to-day business life as a way of kind of engaging people? Yeah, not 
Not every day, no. but for example, if I'm introducing myself to a group of people and we're doing a whole day of training, I'll talk to them about why I think safety is important, and then I'll ask them um, why if they've got any stories that that make safety front of mind for them. I actually had a friend um, just on two years ago that. Um, was killed from a nail gun incident where a nail went through his heart and died and he'd only been married eight weeks. Oh, it's true. So, yeah, so um, health and safety, yeah, it, it does come home to you really about the impact. You are absolutely where you need to be. So let's lighten the mood, SJ. You have gone yeah. and created... On behalf of the industry, the Hunter Safety Awards. Now, for overseas listeners, the Hunter Valley is a region in Australia, in in New South Wales, and uh, SJ Mm -hmm. has gone and said, you know what, (laughs) I'm going to be responsible for putting on the Hunter Safety Awards, uh, which is no small task, really. I always think, SJ, you know, like there's, as a business, we can grow our business and our brand and or we can grow the category. Or, or the industry, you, you've actually chosen to do both. No, normally, it's the bigger businesses that choose to grow the industry, you know, but you've gone and done this through the awards. So, well done to you to start with. Thank you. Yeah. What, what I mean, clearly, I, my question is, what is your motivation for putting them on? I think you've just shared it. But, you know, <laughs> where, where'd the idea come from? And then what kind of made you go, I'm going to actually do it? Uh, it was actually through one of your podcasts, Timbo. Uh, Stop it. I was in the middle, yeah, it was in the middle of the Simpson Desert and there was no um, radio out there. We were there for a couple of weeks driving, my, myself and my husband. So I downloaded a whole heap of your podcasts and I thought I'll catch up to date completely from beginning to where you are. And one of them was um, the... National Porridge Day. I knew you were going to say that. And Listeners, this is not a setup, by the, by the way. I didn't know this. Uh, so, Flip Shelton, who brought to life National Porridge Day. Yes. And I thought maybe I could do a National Safety Day. I thought, well, there already is. And then I thought I could get some t shirts saying, I heart safety. And, and it kind of the thought pattern went through from there. There and um, that's where the Hunter Safety Awards came about. And there was another podcast where you talked about becoming a key person of influence yeah. in your industry. And I do a lot of work outside of the Hunter Valley region, and I wanted to do a lot more local work as well. So I thought um, this was part of my strategy to become a key person of influence in the Hunter Valley region. They're brilliant. Yeah, I thought about it for a while and. Um, I set up a few local um, consulting or um, safety network groups and I asked a lot of other consultants, do you want to do this with me? I've got this idea. And they all said, no, too hard, too big. (laughs) Yeah. And um, so I thought, stuff it, I'll do it myself. And uh, um, 18 months later, we did the awards. What was the – because it would have been – I'm always fascinated, like big ideas becoming reality. And, you know, you've gone out – You've heard on my pod, a couple of podcasts where people have done it and you've gone, okay, well, it's possible to bring a big idea to life and we know it is. You've gone out to your peers in, and they've gone, you crazy, that's too big. That would be mm. good reason to go, oh, yeah, you're kind of right. What can you, can you think of like that moment where you've gone, stuff it, I'm actually, I'm doing it, I'm in. <laughs> I had a marketing consultant helping me with my riskology business and I said to her, look, I've got this idea, but I don't really have anyone else to help me. And she said, you can do this. And I thought, no, I can't. It's just me on my own. And she said, you can. You can do it on your own. Um, and I was telling her that I'd just recently been married and I loved organising the wedding. And she said, it's just like organising a big wedding. And it was. It was fantastic. Nice. Nice. So you had that, that person who kind of gives you the encouragement. Love it. Yeah. Um, what, what was the first kind of major step, SJ, to bring it to life? Oh, it was such a long time ago. Uh, really um, picking. 18 months. Yeah. It was really picking what year I was going to um, do it. Mm-hmm. And I was going to do it end of 2015. And 2015 crept up really quickly. I was so glad I picked. 2016, but I picked the beginning of the year, so it was uh, March, uh, um, just 
a week ago that mm-hmm. it was on because a lot of the other awards are towards the end of the year. So I thought I'll stand alone mm-hmm. and um, hopefully it won't be around any other awards, which worked quite well. So you set a date. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm guessing sponsorship was probably fairly fundamental to making this happen. Would that be fair? Yeah, uh, it was really difficult to try and approach sp- um, sponsors and say, "Just little old me organising it. I promise it's going to be professional." <laughs> um, and just trying to give them the vision that yes, this is really going to work. So. It's like, trust me, I'm a safety nerd. Yes. One of the things that I wanted to put forward first was a really good quality MC. So I got Andrew Datto on board. So then I could say, look, look, I promise it's going to be really professional. Look, I've got this. So overseas listeners, Andrew Datto is uh, an Australian TV celebrity. And so what you're saying is, SJ, it's a bit like when, from what I understand in Hollywood, if if a writer can say, we've got, you know, we've got George Clooney on board, yes. then the studios are going to take <laughs> much more interest. So you kind of played that card, did you? Yes, yes, <laughs> I, yes I did. And one of the first sponsors that got on board straight away was Newcastle University. Mm-hmm. and they just jumped behind it straight away and um, I leaned on all, all my networks in the local area but I was quite picky with having high caliber well-known organizations as, as sponsors so Good then it would just grow from there because it'd be so easy to really take anything anyone any brand you know at, at this yeah. I like that. I like the idea of, um, you know, A, attaching uh, someone of note to so people. That would have been quite a financial commitment to get Andrew on board, although from what I saw on some of your communications inside the forum, Listeners SJ is a member of the Small Business Big Marketing Forum, is that Andrew wasn't as expensive as you might have thought or he gave you a discounted rate? No, he was quite affordable, yeah. Yeah, so that was a pleasant surprise. It's interesting, anyone under 25... Um, had no idea who he was, and I said, oh, you know, he was on Getaway and he was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and then they, oh, okay, I know who he is. Yeah, right, okay. So did you find then momentum started to build? You got Andrew on board, you've got the Newcastle University on board, then it was easier, more doors opened? Yes. Uh, another big thing was the media partners. Ah. So the media partners, there was no payment involved but there was the what can we do for them and what can they do for me yep. involved so there was Newcastle Herald there was Hunter Headline and there was Coalface Magazine so Coalface Magazine magazine brought in the coal mining and there's a lot of mining around the Hunter Valley Mm. area which also um, pulled over the line um, one of the large coal mines as a sponsor and um, they were doing advertising for me on a regular basis about the awards for nominations for tickets so it also helped with getting more sponsors over the line. Hey team, we're chatting with self-professed safety nerd Sarah Jane Dunford. Before SJ explains how she brought the awards idea to life, here's a word from a couple of businesses that simply want you to succeed. Support for this show comes from Net Registry, a one-stop shop for getting your online marketing sorted. Verity Ma, their Chief Marketing Officer, recently told me this story of a very happy mechanic. So one of my favourite stories of customers that I heard was a salesperson was talking to a mechanic and he was talking about what sort of email he would like to have and what kind of hosting, whether he wants cloud or cPanel hosting. And the mechanic just said, look, I don't care, build my website, here's my phone number, make my phone ring and send me the bill. And that was the last we heard of him. He didn't provide us content. He didn't provide us any details about his business. We had his contact details. We wrote all the content and we just got his phone ringing and sent him the bell. Net Registry, where happy mechanics go to grow their business online. Visit netregistry.com.au or give them a buzz on 1300 638 734 and tell them Timbo sent you. This episode is also made possible by Audible, who's offering you a free audiobook of your choice right now. 
I'm listening to Dr. Wayne Dwyer's How to Live an Inspirational Life. And I've got to say, team, it's a game changer. Head over to audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM and choose a free audio book from 180,000 titles. And now, back to the show. Hey, now, SJ, let's talk about an OMG moment that you had along the way where you're seeing this thing come together, you've got the sponsors, you've got the MC, you're getting a bit of media coverage. Was there a moment where you've either thought, oh, my God, what have I done, Uh, and kind of thought, can we kind of just not do this? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, as soon as we um, put the tickets on sale. (laughs) So the tickets went on sale in January. And within two weeks, I only had about 10 tickets sold. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm going to have to give all the sponsorship money back. This is a disaster. I thought, bare minimum, I need a room of about 100. And I thought I might have to do hire a friend and get every single person I know in the room. But um, once once I advertised who the finalists were, all the finalists started buying tickets Uh. and the momentum then went from there. So how many weeks into advertising who the finalists were was that? Uh, it was about a month oh. into ticket sales. Right. So you're looking yeah. down the barrel. And there of, were only two months. You're looking down the barrel of an empty room, but then all of a sudden, that's interesting, all of a sudden maybe there's a bit of ego attached there where people go, oh, hang on, hang on, I'm going to get a mention yeah. here. I'm going to invite all my mates. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. So... Um, all of a sudden, the room fills up. Was it? Was it? How many did you end up getting? Just under four hundred. Oh, well done. How's that make you feel? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, pretty chuffed. Yeah, I um the couple of years leading up to it, when I thought about this, I started going to a lot of the awards nights. Yep. A little bit of a spy to see, you know, which ones are the A grade, which ones are the B grade ones, and mm. how I can do better mm-hmm. than all of those in the Hunter. So there were things like uh, some of them didn't have gift bags, some of them didn't have video, um, some of them didn't have magazines for the night uh, about the halftime entertainment. So I looked at what were the things I liked in each of those awards and what could I bring in and what could I leave out. Mm -hmm. So what what were your big learnings? Uh, The big learnings were uh, I was aiming towards being like the Logies, so glamorous. The Logies being like the, uh, it's like the Australian TV awards. Yes. Yeah. And so um, because safety people wear steel cap boots and fluoro vests all day long, <laughs> so something where he could put some very unsafe high heels on and um, <laughs> strut around, um, have a couple of drinks and relax. What about the women? <laughs> the, the <laughs> and so... I wanted, for example, a media wall where they could go stand in front of, there's a professional photographer that can take some photos and um, all the logos behind them. So they feel really special going in. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a professional uh, videographer um, who directed some films of all the sponsors. So then when the award was announced, the sponsor would go up um, and as that was happening, a 45-second film would come up about the sponsor. Brilliant. And, and um, gift bags on all the, um, the chairs. So then they had some samples of safety equipment, an award magazine which talked about the finalists and talked about the sponsors they could take home as well. Uh, and also the winners would then, with the sponsors, go out into a side room where there was another media wall they had the professional photographer taking photos of them and also the film crew who would interview them saying, how do you feel about winning this? Uh, the, the trophies, I actually got plastic chromed hard hats. Love it. And um, they were chromed over in America and sent via Hawaii to get to me because I found it so hard to find a company in Australia that could do them within wow. the time frame. So they were really well received, but I wanted something really different. And your, your, your big award was a gold safety helmet, which I kind of like. Yes, yes. 
So everything you've just described, SJ, adds up to an amazing customer experience. To me, that's the big learning right there, where you have gone, first of all, you've gone out and seen what others are doing. Secondly, you've gone, okay, well, I'm going to challenge, some of what they're doing is good, and I'm going to do that. Some of what they're doing isn't so good, or they're not doing these things, and I'm going to do that. And there are all these little, all these individual things by themselves are not necessarily killer ideas, but combined, you have created an event that I'm sure will be talked about for, you know, a long time to come. Mm, I hope so. I'm hoping it does um, give it the momentum so then it it just gets bigger and bigger every year. I think the only issue I'll have if it does get bigger is finding a venue in the Hunter Valley. That oh, can hold poor the... thing! What a pro... it's like having to pay tax. You know, the more the more tax you pay, <laughs> the more money you're earning. So um, that's great. Okay, so big tick to the Hunter Safety Awards Year One. It worked. Now you're already talking up Year Two. Tell me what mm-hmm. has it done for your business and if anything for your personal brand. Let's start with your business. It's only early days yet um, so far. Uh, I have had some inquiries from businesses asking me to quote for some consulting work and um, time will tell. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think just over time if someone needs a consultant rather than Googling someone, uh, they'll know who I am. Uh, I've also increased um, my Google ranking to number one for what? in the Hunter region um, for Newcastle Safety Consultant, nice. Hunter Valley Safety Consultant. I'm on the first page where previously I, I tried really hard to get it up there and it was a struggle to get it onto the first page. So all the mentions in the, in the media has helped yeah, yeah well all of a sudden you're getting you you're you're getting articles in media publications which which generally rank mm-hmm. pretty well i'm guessing newcastle uni i mean if you can get a, a link on a dot edu site which i'm guessing you've got now that's pretty handy um, yeah and and most of the sponsors have also put articles on their blogs and their websites and um, a lot of other I, I've for some reason I've found and I don't know why I didn't realize this before but media are wanting stories like this to talk about good news stories about business why didn't you realize that that's interesting like you deal in a very okay I, I, I've just answered my own question in my mind you deal in a very dry rational space but It's also very emotional, as you described earlier, with, you know, the the various stories you have around why you're involved in safety. So that that kind of light's gone off in your head now where you've gone, actually, I deal in something that's very, very interesting. Yes, yeah, Mm. and and it's usually such a – it's either dry or it's talking about the negative with health and safety. It's not usually the positive. So from a personal brand point of view – are you walking down the street and people are going, hey, uh, I, th- I think that's Sarah Jane. She's the safety nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have had a, a couple of people say they know me now. I love it. Um, and um, one of the, the media sponsors, partners, Cole Face Magazine, had me on the front cover of their March issue. <laughs> you are a rock star. <laughs> So I um, did have a couple of people say, I saw you in the fish and chip shop the other day. <laughs> Can't go anywhere without seeing you. This is fantastic, <laughs> SJ. Um, are you capturing all this? Are you making sure you're getting clippings and putting show reels together and putting a media section on your yes. website? Yeah, yeah, like, boy, oh, boy, you have got absolute fodder for, for not only getting the awards up bigger and better next year, uh, which I want to talk about in a minute regarding sponsorship of those awards next year, but also, um, you know, just for your business riskology where, goodness me, you have got such credentials. You already did, but now they're, <clears throat> they're supercharged. Mm. Well, well um, also for safety in the industry itself with Coalface having the whole magazine for the March issue dedicated to safety. Yeah. The Hunter Business Review, which is another magazine, they're dedicating their April issue just to health and safety because of the awards. So it, it's got a really big role on effect for the industry as a whole. So I'm hoping that this can just add more and more momentum each year. Uh, just to finish up, SJ, are you happy to talk? Uh, we don't have to mention uh, dollar figures, but, you know, in terms of some financials around putting on the safety awards? 
Mm -hmm. So what I understand is in previous conversation with you, um, with all the success you've had with these awards, raising the profile of safety in the Hunter Valley, raising the profile of your business of yourself, giving people an event to go to of note, Uh, tick, 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 tick. Uh, However, from what I understand, you ran it, it, it did a break even or ran it a bit of a loss? A bit of a loss for the first year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the first year, it was an absolute shoestring uh, budget, just so that, for example, the, the sponsorship um, was really low to get people through the door. Mm-hmm. The ticket sales were lower than all the other events in the area, again, to try and get people through the door. And so it was everything was at an absolute shoestring. So next year, I'm hoping to recover some of those costs and totally. onward and upward. Well, you've proved yourself. You've proved the idea. And you know, I think saying to you the other day, you, there's probably never – and you've got sponsors saying we want to be involved, I'm guessing, next year, yeah? Yeah, even at the awards night, people were approaching oh. me saying, I want to be a sponsor next year. Wow. And some really big, well-known organisations as well. So right so now hopefully is, it speaks for itself. Well, of course. Uh, right now you've got uh, probably a window, I'm guessing, to – engage those sponsors but also I, I reckon now this year between year one and year two is where you're going to have the most opportunity to increase your price significantly yes I'm putting a budget together at the moment but right. yeah the biggest price increase will be from year one and year two so that I can get back some of those um, recouped funds for example there's this safety award for the state that's run by the government their budget was double what my budget was for this year. Yeah, right. So, yeah, there is a lot of room to move. Plenty that of room. So that we can, yeah. Don't be shy. Write numbers down. If they make you squirm, don't rub them out. <laughs> just just <laughs> sit with them until you're comfortable. But, uh, you know, as I said, I mean, don't underestimate the power of this. And, and given what you've done, you know, I think you've got good reason to think geographically beyond the Hunter Valley and go, well, could this be the safety awards for, I, I don't know, New South Wales? Or I think you've got to think bigger because um, you deserve to, you know. Yeah, I've been thinking outside of the box a little bit with different ah. regions. So it all depends on my um, um, time and network and yep. be able to get out there and do yep. it. Well, SJ, I just think it's wonderful what you've done. I think as a lesson for us all, the idea of doing something that grows the industry, that creates greater awareness around the industry uh, is amazing given the size of your very small but successful consultancy. Uh, many, many wouldn't do this. Uh, I reckon at some point sit back with a bottle of Chardonnay and hubby and go, can you believe that? Can you believe what, what I just did? Yeah. And hopefully he'll give you a little pat on the back and, a, you know. He gave me a wink and said, oh, you've done all right. Oh, he's a tough guy. Hey, SJ, I love your work. I find it very inspiring. I hope that as you listened to a podcast of a couple of years ago and got inspiration to do this, someone's listening to this and seeks inspiration to do it elsewhere. I think it'd be a wonderful thing. How can people find you, SJ? Uh, Either through the Hunter Safety Awards, so info at huntersafetyawards.com.au or my um, safety consultancy, so the website www.riskologyconsulting.com.au. Love your work. Thanks, SJ. Yeah, thanks, Timbo. Well, there you go, team. That was Sarah Jane Dunford, the safety nerd. What a good chick. Hey, I'm allowed to say that, aren't I? That's what we do. That's how we say it in Australia. My audience is global, though, so she's not like a chicken. She's a lovely lady. Thanks, SJ. Hey, what about this update? She dropped inside the forum just last week following our interview. So this is a couple of weeks after our interview. She says, this week I've had three requests for quotes from some big well-known organisations and two speaking gigs. I usually only have around five to ten clients per year and no speaking gigs (laughs) that I work with. So to get three requests for quotes in a week, that's big time. End quote. Hey, that's the power of marketing. Love your work, SJ. Hey, here's my top three learnings from that fireside chat. Thanks to the very good folk at Net Registry and Audible. Number one, ask what you can do 
to help build your category. It's quite a challenging one, this one, for the smaller business owner. It's like, oh, do I have to help build my category? Can't the big businesses do it? Well, maybe take a different mindset because helping build your category will pay off in spades, I reckon, just as it has done for SJ. I sort of feel like I'm doing that in the small business marketing space. And for me, it's paying off in spades. Attention grabber number two, have the courage to be selective. SJ was, when choosing her sponsors, it would have been so easy for her to say yes to anyone in the first year, but oh, no, no, not SJ. She was selective. And what we say no to determines what we say yes to. You knew that, right? Attention grabber number three, go and check out what your competitors are up to. I like doing that doesn't mean you have to adopt what they're doing, but it may identify opportunities and gaps in the market that you could fill. We love a bit of a gap filler, don't we, team? They're my top three attention grabbers. What were yours? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 307 and tell me. Leave a comment in the show notes. I know, I know, I ask all the time, but I read them all and I get my guests to respond to them and it just kind of keeps the conversation alive and I'm I kind of like that. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. Turn that off. Turn that off. We don't want that. But it does remind me of a wonderful quote regarding mobile phones. It goes like this. Today, I will be sure to use my mobile phone as an assistant, not as the master of my mind. Every call shall have my undivided attention. Equally, I will ensure that the call stays on topic and respects the available time for both of us. I am the master of my mobile phone. End quote. Now, where'd I put that phone? <laughs> Oh, I do love that quote. It's a bit spiritual, isn't it? Hey, maybe because of my time at my health retreat, I needed to find some kind of spirituality in my quoting. Hey, um, listen, a question. This one was left on iTunes. Thank you. Five star review too. It's a great question from a great business, a business that I used to love. Not anymore because I've been on a health retreat. I can't have any more potato cakes or dim sims. I do love them. Okay, it's from Chris. Chris from Chompers. He says, hey, Timbo, you are the petrol to my business motor. Thanks for keeping me inspired. Oh, I never saw myself like that, Chris, but I'll, I'll take that. You're the petrol to my business. Oh, no, not. You have improved our business more than you will ever know. Oh, it's nice. Getting quite emotional now. It always sends a shiver up my spine when I get that kind of feedback. Then you will ever know. Now I want to know. <laughs> also want to use, know, whether, do you use chicken salt, Chris? I love chicken salt. Not anymore, though. Question, Timbo. I get that we need to be creating helpful marketing. Ah, correct. You must have read my book, The Boomerang Effect. That could look, but what, but what could that look like for a fish and chip shop? I get what it looks like for service businesses, even someone like Super Cheap Auto. But what about us? Good question, Chris. The knowledge I have is around how to run a great takeaway shop, but that isn't what interests our customers. We don't really get asked many questions to answer. Help! With an exclamation mark, says Chris from Chompers. It's a good question, Chris. Helpful marketing, solving the problems of your prospects and clients so that they return in spades. I'll give you three ideas. Number one, create a series of recipes to sell off your website, Chris. If you haven't got a website, get one, mate, because it just helps you found, get found anyway. Put your menu on it, location, opening hours, all that type of stuff. Then create a series of recipes to sell, maybe 99 cents each, or you could put 20 to 30 recipes together behind a password where people pay 20 bucks to get them all. Hey, little additional revenue stream for your fish and chip shop. Idea number two. Do a weekly video talking about what fish are making good eating at the moment or simply what's on your mind. How to fry a Mars bar. (laughs) 
how to cook potato cake. I love potato cakes. You could offer that video in exchange for an email or phone number off your website and you could build that database up and then send them, text them or email them weekly specials and drive traffic back into your store. Hey, that's helpful. They're getting videos, you're getting traffic, sales. Another idea, Chris, third one, last one, hold cooking classes. You, I reckon you'd love, you must love your takeaway food. Show people what you love about it. Cooking with seafood, cooking with dim sims, how to create the best potato cake ever or the best chip batter, I don't know. You know, you might feel like you're going to be giving away all your secrets and that people won't want to buy from you anymore, but that's not the case. Look what Jamie Oliver does. So there's three ideas, mate. Thanks for the question, Chris. If I had a website or an address for you, I'd send people to Chompers, but I don't. But thanks for your uh, listening in, buddy. I really appreciate it. And thanks to everyone who's left a listener review on iTunes. That is hugely appreciated. I go there once a day, once every hour. No, 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 once every hour. I was every couple of hours. See if anyone's left a review. Have a read. Leave a listener question in your review and I will answer it on this show. So go to iTunes, search Small Business Big Marketing and hit the ratings and reviews button and just write a review. Not that hard. Oh, that's been a fun show. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have. Plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks ahead. Next week, I have another guest who is a long-time listener of this show and a long-time member of the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Do you see a trend developing? Hey, long-time listeners and forum members are now getting their marketing house in order and they're cranking out really good stuff. They're building their business. Oh, it excites me. His name's Nick May. He owns a painting business in Colorado and he's recently launched two podcasts and he's now entering the speaking circuit. Oh, it's a great story. He tells us some of his favourite marketing plays. Hey, thanks to the ridiculously handsome Daryl Delirious Misson for stitching together this show each week. I love you like a brother, Daz. Uh, Both of us, great heads for podcasting. Both of us. (laughs) And to organ player and singer, Lockie Dolly, for all the tunes you hear throughout each episode. You can check Lockie out over at LockieDolly.com. He's a good fella. Hey, big hugs to both Net Registry and Audible for making this show possible. Be sure to use Net Registry if you need your website found or maybe your existing website needs a bit of a tickle, a bit of a facelift. Go over to netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo and you'll find some exclusive packages there just for you. Uh, grab a free audio book of your choice over at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. That's a good thing to do. You can stop now. You can go and do that right now. And if you want to surround yourself with other motivated business owners, join the forum. It's not that hard. It's not that expensive. It's got this really low value like price tag, but massive value, massive value. Why wouldn't you enjoy it? Enjoy it and join it. Smallbusinessbigmarketing.com is where you find it or crankmymarketing.com will take you there. Hey, if you know anyone who books speakers for events, I'm your man. It's what I do. Tim Reed, reid.com.au is where you'll find me. That's enough plugging. I hope you got some marketing G-O-L-D from this week's episode. I love bringing it to you. Until next week, I am Timbo Reid. Thanks for listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. (laughs) 